I've been saying this for years, Nintendo has mastered the art of the E3 presentation. While other companies are wasting our time with filler content such as celebrity appearances, boring speeches, and absurdly excited audience members, WHOA! YOU TELL them. Nintendo is wasting no time getting to the point of E3, new and upcoming video games. Of course, the filler content can be entertaining, and I know a lot of people who look forward to the wacky things they bring on stage. In that sense, E3 itself has become more of an annual entertainment venue event rather than a journalism event. But since Nintendo ditched their live presentations back in 2013, they have shown time and time again that their direct formula works. It's relatively cost effective, doesn't put unneeded pressure on the Japanese developers to speak English, can be easily viewed worldwide in most languages, and maybe most importantly, doesn't allow for awkward stage moments like this. Oh. <laughs> Part of me does miss that. That's not to say I wasn't disappointed when they axed their live presentations. On the contrary, I was oddly heartbroken when they made the switch. Boo! I love seeing Reggie blurting out goofy lines, Miyamoto and Aonuma revealing, sometimes awkwardly, more about their upcoming projects, and hearing the crowd lose their minds over an out of nowhere game announcement. But over time, I've come to understand that all Nintendo needs for an amazing E3 presentation are good game announcements and good gameplay. That doesn't mean they can't have fun with their announcements. This is Nintendo we're talking about. They have a soul, unlike EA. But Nintendo doesn't need a big celebrity or a car built out of Legos to sell their game. Although both were breathtaking. No, you're breathtaking! For one, Nintendo owns some of the biggest IPs known worldwide. So hiring a B-class celebrity might be overdoing it. No offense, Keanu. And second, the directs can still be entertaining in their own right, but their focus is first and foremost revealing upcoming games in a quick and straightforward manner. Granted, it wasn't always like that. There have been some filler-filled E3 directs, namely 2014 and 2015, but as the years passed and Nintendo shifted from big and grand to quick and simple, the directs evolved into what we saw this past June, making Nintendo the masters of E3 2019. However, I'm not saying the other presentations were terrible, although maybe a little mediocre. Microsoft had great games to show, and Square killed it with the Final Fantasy VII remake. But overall, Nintendo was the one company that delivered on all phases, especially when coupled with Treehouse Live. Announcements, incredible updates, release dates, cinematic trailers, and gameplay. Going into the Direct, I expected to see Luigi's Mansion 3, Animal Crossing, Fire Emblem, Link's Awakening, and one new Smash character, if not two. And holy Miyamoto, my expectations were blown away. To start off, the hero, Dragon Quest, was finally revealed for Smash after months of rumors and speculation from the fans. Honestly, it makes so much sense to have one of the biggest RPGs in Japan represented in Smash. Ignore the haters crying about anime swordsmen and too many JRPGs. Dragon Quest is an enormous part of Nintendo's history in Japan. At its prime, it was the hottest selling series in Japan, the Pokemon of the late 80s, early 90s. Dragon Quest was the must play game for kids and some adults alike. To say the series has no place in Smash is like saying the Zelda series shouldn't be in Smash because it doesn't sell well in Japan. Well, at least until Breath of the Wild. Smash is supposed to be a celebration of gaming history, specifically Nintendo history. Not including Dragon Quest would be a huge blemish on that purpose. The hero himself, all four of him, is a callback to the series' 24-year history, borrowing alts and moves from the main protagonists of popular Dragon Quest games. His movesets particularly drive up the retro old-school gameplay that is a staple for the series. And yes, that includes RNG. It's not unintentional that the hero is an RNG monster, as RNG plays a fairly big role in Dragon Quest combat. This once again proves how meticulous Sakurai becomes when adding characters into Smash Ultimate. As you can see, we tried to make the hero as faithful to the games as possible, even as far as the battle menu. Okay, hold on guys. Hey, Waluigi is number wa in the chat. Keep spamming Waluigi memes in the chat and I will ban you. Personally, I've always found the white box and text of Dragon Quest's UI to be rather bland, in a world where Persona 5 and Fire Emblem 3 houses exist, but that's besides the point. Sakurai took the essence of Dragon Quest and added it to Smash, similar to how he took the essence of Persona 5 and Joker and put it in Smash. 
The hero has already been out for a couple weeks since I finally released this video. Three houses has consumed my life in many more ways than one. But the fact remains, the hero was the smash reveal Nintendo needed to kickstart their E3 Direct. It was a great way to break the ice, confirm the rumors, and hype up the big Japanese fanbase. But if Nintendo wanted to leave a legendary shockwave at E3, they couldn't have a Direct with only one Smash reveal, or even a mediocre second reveal. They needed a reveal that could rival the likes of Joker and the Hero. A reveal that would make the Fighter Pass worth the price of admission for thousands of fans outside of Japan. That reveal was Banjo. Uh -huh. I'm gonna be honest with you, I did not grow up playing Banjo. Aside from watching friends play it, or goofing around in the overworld for a few minutes, I have not played any of the Banjo games, let alone to completion. Yet despite that, I realize how important the character is to many Nintendo fans and Nintendo's history. Without delving into great detail, let me summarize the N64's legacy in three series. Mario, Zelda, and Rareware. Yes, I know Rareware isn't a series. My point is, besides some tiny gems here and there, a fair majority of hit games on the N64 were Rareware titles, not to mention their incredible work on the Donkey Kong series prior to N64. Excluding rare representation from a game that is meant to celebrate the history of Nintendo was, in my mind, an unsightly asterisk on the Smash series name. Of course, I realize King K. Rule is a Rareware original character, but he is slightly less impactful than Banjo when you consider that the Donkey Kong franchise was already in Smash. Granted, the franchise needed more representation, and K. Rule fit the bill perfectly, but Banjo checks a different kind of box. Banjo is more or less the face of 90s era 3D platforming, alongside Mario, Crash, and Spyro. To this day, fans debate whether Super Mario 64 or Banjo Kazooie is the better game. Hint, it's Mario. Proving the impact both series had on Nintendo fans. With Banjo included in Smash, not only do you pay homage to one of Nintendo's famous former developers in Rareware, you recognize a generation of gaming, the glory days of 3D collectathons. Now, it's easy to boil down the inclusion of the hero and Banjo Kazooie as simply throwing a bone to the Japanese and Western fanbase. However, when you look at the important history they share, it's a no brainer they made the roster. Well, a no brainer as long as Square Enix and Microsoft played nice, which they gratefully are. Returning to the presentation, an E3 Direct with only Smash DLC as the highlight wouldn't bode well for the Switch's grand scheme, and I wouldn't be here claiming Nintendo are the masters of E3. Instead, Nintendo used the Smash DLC as the bait and saved their hook, line, and seeker for the middle. Out of all the games shown in E3 by Nintendo, nothing impressed me more than Luigi's Mansion 3. The setting, the improved textures, the fluidity, the gameplay, everything is miles above the original and Dark Moon or even the first reveal trailer for that matter. Luigi's Mansion 3 combines elements from the first two games, learns from its past mistakes, and is shaping up to be the best in the series. It's charming, it's unique, it's fun, and it's spooky. I've already gone over my thoughts in my original E3 2019 video, so be sure to check that out for my full thoughts. However, believe me when I say Luigi's Mansion 3 is going to be a game adored by critics and fans come October 31st. There's charm, passion, and creativity oozing from 3 that I thought had disappeared when Next Level Games took over as the main developer for the series. Clearly, I was wrong. The development team is not just taking Luigi's Mansion to the next level, they're taking it to beyond the next level. The 22nd floor to be exact. Granted, I have only the two trailers, some treehouse gameplay, and my own time with the demo to go off of, but believe me when I say next level games might have a game of the year contender on their hands. Not if I have anything to say about it. Honestly, if it weren't for three houses, Luigi's Mansion would probably be my most hyped game following E3. Although with three houses finally out, it's safe to say that Luigi's Mansion 3 has claimed the title of my most anticipated game for the last half of the year. Game of the year, on the other hand, won't be that easy. <laughs> Speaking of Fire Emblem, we got to see more of Three Houses in all its glory, including a one-two combo of story trailer and treehouse gameplay. But I've already gone over that content extensively in two videos, so you can listen to my pre-release theories and analysis there. Or just play the game. <laughs> that works too. That said, 
Three Houses was another major impactful trailer from E3. Not a surprise announcement, but a surprise twist, igniting new hype for the game. Another major yet expected title was Animal Crossing, albeit a little more crucial. Leading up to E3, we knew nothing about Animal Crossing Switch, aside from the fact that it was just coming. Going into E3, fans were near panicking that the game was in development hell, to the point they were breaking out their voodoo magic again. Hey, it worked before, might as well try again, right? Thankfully, Nintendo heard their dark summonings and gave us a first look at New Horizons. Needless to say, fans were quite pleased with the trailer. Granted, it was delayed until next year, but that didn't matter. What mattered was the confirmation through an exciting gameplay trailer that it was coming. Similar to my relationship with Banjo-Kazooie, I've only played Animal Crossing once or twice at a friend's house when I was younger. Well, more like watch my friend play until he was ready to play Melee. That said, I can empathize with Animal Crossing fans this E3, because I went through the same panic this last year with Fire Emblem. We had to wait over a year for Nintendo to finally show us three houses, and then a year after that to finally play it. But when the first reveal trailer dropped, you know the hype nearly caused me to pass out. So I completely understand where Animal Crossing fans are coming from. On top of that, Treehouse showed off an exciting E3 demo, covering the new features New Horizons has to offer. And I have to say, even as a non-fan of the series, this looks inviting. Starting from scratch on a deserted island, crafting my furniture and tools, co-op? I can see this easily becoming one of the top 5 best-selling Switch games. Yet again, Nintendo delivered on all accounts, with trailer, release date, and actual gameplay. Fast, easy to process, and incredibly hype-inducing. In fact, Nintendo jam-packed many hype-inducing trailers in the 43-minute presentation, including some games not made by Nintendo. Trials of Mana Remake, No More Heroes 3, Panzer Dragoon Remaster, Nino Kuni Remaster, Witcher 3, and so much more! And of course, we can't forget about already announced games like The Link's Awakening Remake, which I played at E3, and Astral Chain, both of which look phenomenal in their own right. However, not every trailer during E3 thrilled the masses. One Treehouse gameplay in particular sparked a protest that still goes on today, Pokemon Sword and Shield. I've been purposely avoiding the subject because I know people on both sides will jump down my throat for saying anything remotely positive or negative about Sword and Shield, but I will touch on it a bit. I understand you are disappointed. I understand you expected to have every single Pokemon in HD for the first time in a mainline game. I understand the animations are basic, the graphics mediocre, and the excuses fishy. I completely see where you're coming from. But that will not stop me from enjoying the game. What you see is a series taking several steps back, I see is a series taking some steps forward. I don't play Pokemon to fill my national decks or to appreciate the animations and graphics. For me, Pokemon is about the new Pokemon, the cast, and the new adventures I make with each entry. Sure, I have plenty of gripes, go watch my Pokemon Love video, but I still have fun. The Galar region is looking to be a fantastic adventure filled with amazing Pokemon and features that I think will take Pokemon in a good direction. Dynamax ain't one of them. Granted, I don't know for sure that I'll enjoy Sword and Shield. I could end up hating it by the time I finish, but from what I see, my hopes are high. However, that is my opinion, the price I'm willing to pay to play a new Pokemon game. If you strongly disagree with me, that is fine. Just please don't spam the comments and Pokemon related posts with hashtags for my sanity. That's what you get for mentioning it! Yeah, yeah, I deserve that. Even with the poor reception Pokemon received, Nintendo still had the best presentation at E3. As soon as that musically inclined bear fell from the sky, they had won. It was the last piece Nintendo needed to cap off their tremendous presentation. Nintendo didn't need to do anything else. But they weren't done yet. In typical fashion, Nintendo had one more announcement to finish the Direct. But what could possibly top Banjo and Smash, let alone everything else they already showed off? It would have to be a new Zelda game or so jumping Koroks they did it! Breath of the Wild was, as I'm sure you know, revolutionary for the Zelda franchise, flipping the Zelda formula and gameplay on its head, with the end result being Game of the Year 2017 and subsequently the best-selling entry in the franchise. Nintendo would be insane to not capitalize on that success. Thankfully, Nintendo hasn't gone off the deep end yet. But they didn't show any gameplay! That goes against everything you praised Nintendo for! 
I'll admit this reveals a gap in my argument. There was no gameplay, no solid reveal date, it was just a teaser trailer. However, there are a few differences when compared to other teaser trailers, like Metro Prime 4 and Animal Crossing. Instead of a moving JPEG or Tanuki behind a computer, Nintendo showed a cutscene of Link and Zelda exploring a spooky dungeon. The mysterious and ominous vibe gave us a small glimpse at the direction Breath of the Wild 2 is taking. Another difference is, because it is a sequel, we know what the gameplay will be like, or at least an idea. Tom Nook watching YouTube videos doesn't really tell you that. However, instead of going in depth on the tease, I will have a deep dive video coming up in the near future about the teaser trailer. I know there are already hundreds of videos out there about Breath of the Wild 2 already, but I want to take a stab at it. You never know what I'm going to find. Someone else probably already did. By the end of Nintendo's presentation, most of us were speechless. Personally, I couldn't believe I just saw Banjo, Hero, Luigi's Mansion, Fire Emblem, and Zelda all in one year and more to come? It's almost too good to be true. That's the kind of impression E3 presentation should leave on the viewer. Now, who am I to say Nintendo won't change in the future? Maybe instead of a video presentation, they send an interactive newsletter with code to try out show floor demos. That might be a terrible idea. But for now, Nintendo is content with where they are. They are the masters of E3. And my wallet. Thank you so much for watching! Did you enjoy Nintendo's E3 2019? What was your favorite part? What was your least favorite part? Let us know in the comments below! If you like more Nintendo related videos, please subscribe! We got a few videos in the work, including a Three Houses reveal, Zelda deep dive, and some other surprises, so please check back. Oh look, we passed 2,500 subscribers! Halfway to 5,000! Thank you all for subscribing and welcome to Nintendo City! Goodbye, good people!